Welcome, everybody. My name is Jeremy Burton. I'm the executive director of the Jewish Community Relations Council. This event was planned over two years ago, uh, before the pandemic, before events in recent months. Uh, but the timing of it could not be more appropriate, given how things have developed. We are all, those of us here today at least, aware of the rising, alarming increase in anti-Semitic and hate speech and violence, as well as the astonishing ignorance about the historic realities of the Holocaust. Just here in Massachusetts, one only needs to mention events this year in Duxbury, in Lowell, in Winthrop, and for our own community, the horror last week in Brighton that hit so close to home in so many ways. So we have created a state-of-the-art interactive mobile tour to enhance the experience of the New England Holocaust Memorial for visitors, providing historical context, and most important, the video testimony of local survivors to ensure that they will continue to bear witness for future generations. Additionally, we've transformed the memorial's website, which now includes a walkthrough feature that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Today, we are here with combined Jewish philanthropies facing histories, our governor, our mayor, many allies, and most importantly, the survivors who continue to be a part of our vibrant community here in Boston. We want to extend our enormous thanks to the survivors who have shared their stories with us and to the many people who work to preserve and share this history through the mobile and virtual tours. We also want to thank the Kraft Family Foundation and their final Whistle on Hate initiative, which funded this project, as well as the Ingersoll Brown Fund for both the renovation of the site and the previous support for the site when it was first constructed over 25 years ago. And now I'd like to welcome Rabbi Mark Baker, President of Combined Jewish Philanthropies. Thank you all for being here with us today. Governor, Mayor, it means a lot that you're here. Thank you so much. CJP is grateful to JCRC, to Facing History and ourselves, and to all of the partners who've worked so hard to make this New England Holocaust Memorial a 21st century, accessible, educational, moving experience for today and for generations to come. And on behalf of all of us here and across the community, let me express my gratitude and love to the survivors who are with us today and every day. Your presence, your resilience, your legacies are blessings for all of us. We're here at this memorial, as Jeremy just noted, at a critical moment for our commonwealth and our country to reaffirm the urgency and importance of Holocaust awareness and education. It's been just 75 years since the Holocaust, and somehow it's like we've forgotten already. The rise of anti-Semitism across this country in both speech and actions is frightening. Just in the past week, we've seen that, indeed, it can happen here. In Winthrop, a black man and woman were murdered by a hateful racist and anti-Semite. Only days later, a rabbi was stabbed in front of a Chabad synagogue, the place where children go to school and camp, where a community comes together to worship, to learn, to celebrate. Every one of us needs to stand up, stand together, raise our voices and say loudly and clearly, no, not here, not anywhere. We will not tolerate anti-Semitism, racism, or any form of hate. And that's what makes this memorial so critical. 
This memorial is one of the ways that we all live out the sacred obligation to remember and learn from the past. In the Jewish tradition, we have a word for this in Hebrew. The word is zachor. You shall remember. Zachor. When we visit this memorial, we remember and honor the lives of all those who perished in the Holocaust. Zachor. When we visit this memorial, we remember and celebrate the resilience and indomitable spirit of those who survived, rebuilt their lives and communities, and had the courage to tell us their stories. Zachor, when we visit this memorial, we remember our Jewish and human stories, rooting ourselves in the past as we build a better future together. Zachor, when we visit this memorial, we remember the horrors, the genocide, the crimes perpetrated by human beings against human beings to remind ourselves that this can happen again. So we never let it happen again. This is how, together, we ensure that the lights of all those who were murdered in the Holocaust and of our beloved survivors will never go out. This is how, together, we turn a tragic past into a hopeful future. That's what we're doing when we visit this memorial, and that's what we're doing here today. Thank you. Being a public leader, speaking up, showing up, taking action is what's required. And Governor Baker has consistently done all of those things throughout his tenure leading the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I had the privilege personally of visiting Yad Vashem, Israel's National Holocaust Memorial, with him several years ago. And here in Massachusetts, he has consistently shown up, spoken up, and called out the haters whether it was after Charlottesville when he brought the entire state's leadership together at the, at the Capitol to say clearly and with one voice that there is no room for white supremacy in Boston, or whether it's been here on this site at several moments when there have been desecrations. Governor Baker has always stood up against anti-Semitism, against hate, against the spirit that continues to endure of those who sought to destroy the Jewish people 75 years ago. We are very, very grateful that he's making time just at this moment where he's entering back into, and all of us are entering back into in-person space uh, after a year and a half of incredible leadership during the pandemic that he made time to be with us today and to help us open up the new phase of the memorial. Thank you, Governor Baker. Thank you, Jeremy. And, and I, I promise to be mercifully brief here. I, I did have a chance through Councillor Flynn's cell phone to send a message to former Mayor Ray Flynn, who, as many of you know, had a lot to do with making this happen in the first place. He's, uh, am I allowed to tell people that he broke his hip? Um, that means he probably won't be playing basketball for the next 48 hours or so, but I'm sure he'll be back up on his feet soon after that. Uh, I do want to thank uh, our colleagues here. I especially want to thank the mayor for being here and the folks from the council. Uh, I also want to thank some of our colleagues who served on our hate crimes task force, of which Josh Kraft is, is one of the co-chairs. Now, we put that task force back in place maybe four or five years ago uh, because of the rise in incidents that we had seen occurring here in the Commonwealth. And it really became a, sort of a, an opportunity for a bunch of folks across religious, cultural, ethnic, and race communities to talk about what was going on uh, in their communities and what sorts of things we could work on together to make sure that we responded aggressively and quickly to incidents, but just as importantly, to make sure we acted prophylactically to put in place services, supports, and in some cases, infrastructure to protect especially houses of worship um, and particular communities that we were concerned about. And, and I, I can't emphasize how important this issue about remembrance is. When I visited the Holocaust Museum in Israel, that, that's the only museum I've ever been to in my life that's one way. You can't just go into that museum and wander around and do whatever you might do at a normal or traditional museum. They want you to start 
in about 1900, and they want you to follow the societal messaging that began in about 1900 to help you understand why what happened in the 1940s, the virtual attempt to exterminate a particular community from the face of the earth took place. And for literally 40 or 50 years, there was a concerted effort to dehumanize the Jewish community, to make it possible for a madman to pursue the strategy of extermination. And that's why remembrance matters so much and why it's so important, whether you're talking about race or culture or religion or creed, why it's so important for people to basically put their foot down and say no. Because if you don't, if you give it a chance to breathe, if you give it a chance for people to blow on it, that fire will burn. Which is why it's so important for all of us, every chance we have, to step up and say no. And I'm here today on behalf of the Commonwealth to stand with you and with all the other folks who make up this large community of people who are committed, not just to equality, but to the safe opportunity for people, no matter what your creed, culture, religion, sexual orientation, gender identification might be, to be able to live your life positively, happily, and most importantly, safely here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I want to congratulate the team that made it possible for anybody to be part of this experience at any place around the world. And I especially want to say to our survivors who are here today, and I'm looking forward to the Applefield family's walk down the lane with me here today. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here, but I also want to thank all of you for being here because you are, in many respects, the voices and the commitment that we all need to make to one another to ensure that people can live their lives safely and freely here in the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Baker. Uh, as the governor alluded, the relationship of the New England Holocaust Memorial to the office of the mayor of the city of Boston is a historic one. Uh, going back to Mayor Flynn, Mayor Menino, Every mayor, Mayor Walsh, has embraced this site as an essential part of the experience of Boston, its history, its people. Uh, it is here, right outside the window of the mayor's office, with intention by Mayor Flynn that it would always be a, something to look out the window and to think about and to remember and to contemplate the role of public leadership. And so it is a great pleasure and an honor that our current mayor, Mayor Janey, has embraced this role, has embraced this relationship. Uh, even prior to becoming mayor, I know personally that she took time and effort to learn about the Jewish experience and the relationship to the Holocaust, to visit Yad Vashem in Israel. And she, in one of her first public engagements as mayor, appeared here in virtually for Yom HaShoah. And so I am just incredibly honored to welcome her for the first time as mayor to the New England Holocaust Memorial, Mayor Janey. Good morning, everyone. I want to start by thanking uh, JC, RC, uh, and Jeremy for your leadership, uh, your partnership here in the city of Boston. Uh, as you mentioned, I had the trip of a lifetime, a learning journey, as I visited Israel and certainly had the opportunity to visit the Holocaust a Museum there. And I was so struck uh, by that history, uh, that devastating history, and I was reminded uh, as a black woman, as an African-American, of the connectedness uh, that I feel uh, to the Jewish community uh, as someone who certainly understands oppression uh, firsthand. I want to acknowledge the electeds that are here. I want to thank Governor Baker for his leadership uh, and his partnership uh, in the city of Boston uh, and certainly his support to the Jewish community. I also want to 
uh, acknowledge uh, Councillor Matt O'Malley, President of the Boston City Council, and my dear friend, Councillor Flynn, who was with me on that trip uh, to Israel. And we were able to bond uh, and see firsthand uh, the horrors. But in addition to that, we were able to see the resiliency of the people of Israel uh, and how the Jewish community here in Boston uh, stand together. And we must always remember. I want to acknowledge and thank the survivors uh, that are here, and one in particular, uh, Stephen Ross, who is no longer with us. But because of his work, uh, we are able to uh, be here to remember and to have this memorial. Uh, and as folks know, he is uh, the father of, of Mike Ross, who is also a dear friend. Uh, and he passed away uh, last year around the same time that my father passed away. Um, and again, I'm just reminded of the connectedness uh, that I feel uh, to the Jewish community, whether it was standing last week in solidarity uh, when a rabbi was stabbed uh, and seeing folks coming together to say, not here, not Boston, when any one of us is attacked, we are all attacked and we will always stand together as a community against hate, against violence, against uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, it has no place here. And this memorial stands as a way for us to remember and never forget the horrific uh, tragedy that we have seen uh, in the Holocaust and to make sure that it never, ever happens again. Uh, and then finally, I will say, as uh, the first woman mayor and the first black mayor, uh, I know full well that our stories are interconnected and intertwined and that our fight for freedom and justice is ongoing. We must never forget, we must always remember, and we must always, always stand in solidarity against hate, against violence, against any one of us because if it happens to one of us, it can happen to any one of us. And so we must always stand together. And as your mayor, I am here to declare affirmatively and always that I am here to stand with you, to stand with all of you as we uh, remember and acknowledge this important milestone in this memorial. So thank you so much. And I am blessed to be here with you uh, today and always. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's my honor to introduce Josh Kraft, the president of the Kraft Family Philanthropies, who is responsible for the Kraft Family's many philanthropic initiatives, including the Kraft Family Foundation, the Kraft Center for Community Health, the Foundation to Combat Anti-Semitism, the Patriots Foundation, the Revolution Charitable Foundation, and the family's participation in the Reform Alliance, and most importantly, through the final Whistle on Hate initiative in 2019 to make possible today's events. Josh Kraft. Thanks, Jeremy. They were all waiting to get near the gates to freedom. It was very shocking to see people like that and that anybody could be treated that way. You actually did not want to see it. It's like my eyes were opened to a whole different world. The following remarks came from Bernard Fleming, who was part of the 75th Infantry, who 76 years ago liberated the concentration camp Dachau. And in his own words that we took, we interviewed him about three, four months ago, he never forgot, even in his mid-90s, he never forgot what he saw. But unfortunately, some folks are starting to forget. And our responsibility by, by coming here today, by creating the mobile and virtual tours, we are gonna make sure that people don't forget. I know from my dad, the power of anti-Semitism is something that needs to be defeated. And the spirit of all these survivors here today their unwavering 
and their passion for hope and life and humanity is without peer. And they need to be celebrated and never forgotten, not just for Jews, Jewish people, but humans, all humans, black, Asian, everybody. We're all here together celebrating life, celebrating love, and the spirit of hate can never, ever overtake us as it has recently in so many horrific ways that I don't, have already been referenced. So on behalf of my family, it's, a, it's an honor to be here, uh, and my dad to be a part of this day, and just to remember that we can never forget any ills or harms against any humans for whatever the reason. So with that, it's an honor for now for me to introduce Janet Singer Applefield, a survivor of the Holocaust, who again, whose unwavering spirit of hope, love, and humanity can never be defeated. And her message has gotten out to thousands of people, and we're just a small group that gets to hear that today. So thank you for being here, Janet, and your family. I am pleased to see so many familiar faces and, of course, my fellow survivors. We, as survivors, share a special bond, an unusual connection. We who have suffered unimaginable grief and pain are the witnesses of one of the greatest catastrophes of the 20th century, the Holocaust. The varied stories of our survival demonstrate the remarkable resilience and strength that helped us to bear the terrible hardships and pain. Most of us have endured inconceivable losses. I, too, have suffered many losses in my lifetime. But the most profound loss was losing my beloved son, David, Applefield. David died last July, exactly one year ago. I try to imagine the tragic loss my parents experienced when they lost my baby sister, Sarenka. Soon after, they bravely gave me away with the hope that I might survive. I ask myself, is it Bishared? that I was invited to speak here today, I want to believe it, that it is, that was meant to be. For so many reasons, we survivors should not be here, but we are here, present in mind, body, and spirit. I'm committed to be the voice for the loved ones whose lives have been so tragically silenced and carry the responsibility of speaking out against hatred, discrimination, and intolerance. When we survivors are no longer here, I know that our legacies will continue. Our stories will not be forgotten. Due to our families carrying our legacy, wonderful and passionate educators and the incredible technology of digitalization, the stories of our survival will be preserved. This important history will be saved for posterity. Future generations will have the opportunity to learn history and be forever warned of the dangers of governments promulgating dictatorships, tyranny, and oppression. We are honored and grateful to have this beautiful Holocaust Memorial in Boston. And now we're excited to have the interactive tour 
which will enhance the ex experience of visiting this powerful exhibit. I want to thank those who have dedicated their passion, determination, their vision, and their relentless, relentless efforts to see this important project through to fruition. I am grateful and so proud to have, to have been involved, included. So I thank you so much and um, thank you for inviting me here. Thank you, Janet, for continuing to be an inspiration and to share your story to all of, with all of us and to allow us to continue to bear witness. I'd like, to, I'd like to invite up a dear friend of the Jewish community, a partner of the Jewish Community Relations Council, Reverend Lorraine Thornhill, the first female pastor of Kingdom Empowerment Center, the president of the Cambridge Black Pastors Alliance, and the chaplain of the Cambridge Police Department, Reverend Thornhill. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to JCRC and Jeremy for this invitation today. I had the privilege of visiting Yad Vashem World Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem a few years ago through the wonderful opportunity presented by the JCRC. I, had, I knew about the Holocaust, but to read and hear the testimonies of survivors to the atrocities inflicted by Nazi Germany, to learn of the systematic annihilation of millions and millions of Jewish people, and to view the exhibit dedicated to the children of the Holocaust was specially heart wrenching. All because of the consequences of hateful and fearful bigotry that went unchecked will be something I will never forget. One thing that stood out for me on that trip and that visit to the museum was how detrimental it was for people to remain silent and overlook racist, hateful, and anti-Semitic rhetoric that was being spewed then and even now. Places like the New England Holocaust Memorial will help to remind each and every one of us and educate generations to come of the pain and anguish that many people suffered due to hate and fear. I stand here today as a Christian and a religious leader to say that we must come together and stand together to fight against and overcome subtle and overt forms of bigotry and hate, for no group is immune to it. We must commit to speak truth to power and to speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves, and to ensure justice for those being targeted by hate and fear and violence. Even as we has already been uh, spoken about, that the rabbi, we stand here in solidarity with Rabbi Shlomo Naginsky, who was stabbed eight times outside a Jewish day school in Brighton, and the families of Air Force veteran Ramona Cooper and retired Massachusetts State Trooper David Green, who were allegedly, who not were allegedly, but were brutally murdered because of the color of their skin, we are still fighting the same fight. It will take strength, wisdom, and courage to speak up for truth and justice in which we can do within even our own circles. But I'm here today to say we can accomplish more together because we are stronger together. Thank you and shalom. Our next speaker uh, is a partner of JCRC and Combined Jewish Philanthropies in the educational content for this site and for ensuring the continuing memory of the Holocaust. 
president and CEO of Facing Histories, Roger Brooks. Good morning, everybody. I am Roger Brooks, president and CEO of Facing History and Ourselves. I'm honored to be here today uh, with so many of our leaders, governor, mayor, uh, and our survivors, with whom, without whom uh, we have no future. This memorial is important to Facing History and ourselves, not just because of the deep examination of the Holocaust that was the basis of, on which our organization was founded, but we also believe that now, as at our founding, young people must engage with the meaning of past atrocities. They have to critically examine the human behavior that led to the very darkest moment in human history. And yet all of us know that right now, knowledge of the Holocaust is significantly diminishing in the United States, especially among young people. Is it any surprise, is it any surprise that the number of anti-Semitic acts and their viciousness are on the rise? This memorial aims to fill the knowledge gap with new tools for a digital first audience. We hope this sacred site becomes a springboard and inspiration for generations now and to come. And we must share this precious history with our communities. That's where our survivors come in. And even more, we must all become ever more vigilant in the fight against bigotry and hate in all their forms. Like CJP and JCRC, Facing History has been involved with the monument for a long time, and this relaunch marks a continuation of our production of accompanying educational materials. Guides for virtual visits from here in Boston, from elsewhere in the country, from around the globe. Lesson plans for educators, because we know that when committed teachers have the right tools and the right resources, young people who are their students are fully capable of facing this history with courage, integrity, and resilience. We've heard this morning that no must be our statement to anti-Semitism. Young people with the right education can start to say yes to living beyond and with full notice of what's happened. That's our goal. That's what this new memorial, renewed memorial, is all about. It's now my great pleasure and honor to introduce Addison Dion, uh, the granddaughter of Holocaust survivor Stephen Ross, who's already been mentioned, uh, who was one of the founders of this memorial. Addison. Thank you for having me. My name is Addison Dion, and it's a great privilege to be here to commemorate the memorial in the memory of my late grandfather, Steve Ross. Steve wasn't my biological grandfather, but we still called him Grandpa Steve because that's who he was to us. Steve was a survivor, not only the Holocaust, but also the aftermath of it. I only wish I had been able to talk to him about his life more while he was still alive, but sadly I had to learn about it through the written stories he left behind. I read his autobiography from Broken Glass when I was only 12 years old. I didn't really feel in touch with my identity as a Jewish person until I read what Steve had to say. My religion, my family's history, seemed foreign to me until then. Steve taught empathy and resilience even in the bleakest of moments. A single act of kindness changed his life. His life's mission was to inspire and spread awareness. That being said, my mission is to continue spreading his story for as many years as I can. It's important to continue sharing his life and those of other survivors as a young adult. We must not let the flame of history be diminished, as it has unfortunately been many other times. To be standing here today in honor of this beautiful memorial and representation of all the lives we lost during the horror that occurred during World War II is the greatest honor of all. To be able to come together, even at the peak of anti-Semitic hate crime since World War II, is a beautiful thing. It really shows the power of community and unity, even in the midst of dark times. I think that's something Steve would have really appreciated. The unity and education that will come from the modernization of the memorial is something that has been needed for a long time. Steve was a teacher, a mentor to all. He wanted to share his story. The next generation of Jewish youth has to be those educators for the ones who can't be anymore. What we're doing today allows accessibility and education for anyone willing to listen. 
and I believe it will impact many generations for years to come. Steve wanted us to never forget, and that's the message we need to continue to teach. Thank you. As we conclude the formal part of today's program, I want to underscore the words of Roger and of Addison, the importance of educating our youth through every possible venue about Holocaust and genocide education remains a central commitment of JCRC, our partners at the Anti-Defamation League, our friends in the Armenian community, and others who are working to ensure that every child, every youth, has the same experiences that Addison has had in every venue. And we ask for your help in making that possible for every youth in Massachusetts. We now invite Governor Baker and Janet Applefield to go through the memorial together, followed by Mayor Janey and Addison Dion to, to tour the memorial and to experience the stories of survivors and the generation after. And if we ask the press to either go through to the end or to hold back here so that they can have a clean view of them going through. And then we invite the press and all of our guests to go through the memorial. The memorial tour, the digital tour, begins at Station 1 at the entrance, but we will have QR codes available here for those who wish to begin at this point today. Thank you very much, Governor Baker, Mayor Janey. Uh, we invite you to go through.